Okay, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I made it home actually a day earlier than I was supposed to. Uh, they didn't have a load, really, and he said, well, can you come back a day early? And I said, sure. <clears throat> so I got home. I didn't do a big unboxing on uh, these because I was really excited, and it's about 2.30 in the morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, I didn't have none of my kids to do a cool unboxing of these. But uh, this, the one I want to do now, <clears throat> is the uh, Hendrickson Genuine Leather. <clears throat> it's identical to the uh, to the one I had, only it's leather. This in here um, is like thirty bucks, and this one here I think I paid uh, all in. Let me see here, fifty-eight dollars and thirty cents, but it's genuine leather, so, and I'm actually gonna read it. <laughs> this is a, and they call it a facsimile, but it's actually not because it's in Roman type. Now I've been looking into this and reading about this and all studying. I've got several 1611s coming, and. uh they actually had the Roman type um, in 1611. The uh, the actual facsimile that's made with the Gothic text uh, instead of the italic, italicized words like you would find in your uh, in your modern King James, uh, it would have a small uh, word. Uh, that was uh, in the Roman text. And the translator to the reader in the original 1611 was done in the Roman text. So they had that. They just uh, printed it with the wooden uh, Gothic letters. They actually hand-carved every letter. And uh, something interesting is like an N and a U was the same letter. they just flip it upside down. And in the first printing of the King James uh, Bible to 1611, there were printer errors. In other words, uh, sometimes it would be and, A-N-D, and then in other places you would find it uh, A-U-D. And it was just because the printer uh, accidentally put the put the uh, block in upside down. There's misspellings. They didn't have standard standardized spelling uh, in 1611, so when you got to uh, 1762, Cambridge updated. Uh, there were several updates before that, uh, but Cambridge updated it, and then um, in 1769, Oxford updated it. Uh, Blaney, I think his name was, and that's basically the one you got now um, as far as I can tell I might be wrong about that but I'm, I'm doing the research now this is a they call this leather um, it's flexible it doesn't smell like leather and I can find nowhere on there where it actually says leather uh, so but I'll, I'll take their word for it uh, Holy Bible 1611 uh, edition King James Version. There's the 400th anniversary uh, 1611. The Holy Bible and by Hendrickson Publishing. So, anyway, you're not going to scratch this one up. Um, it's got very small print. Let's see, there's the numbers if you wanna wanted to look at it. It's printed in China, of course. This is the 12th printing, November of uh, 2020. Uh, this is in all the original King James Bibles. Um, I'm gonna wait till I get my big one. I got a big one coming and then I'm gonna do a detailed uh, review on it. 
According to the experts, uh, this Campbell guy, he, uh, I watched a video of him and this other scholar, and that's why I know he said, this is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but what's strange is he associated them with these animals. I can't, I don't know if you can see the little lion there, uh, and the eagle, which would be right. And let's see. I can't see the ox in this one. Anyway, I think on uh, some of them there's an ox down here. And I always thought Matthew was associated with the lion. But in this one, uh, they claim that Mark is. Now up here, uh, that's the name of God the Holy Spirit, and of course the Lamb. And down here you have a pelican feeding uh, her babies by biting herself and letting the blood come out. And that's another uh, symbol uh, for Jesus, I guess, in 1600s. <clears throat> now, you got to get used to the language the spelling is all out of whack. Sometimes, uh, even in the same chapter, they spell the word differently, and I'll show you that. Uh, conveying the Old Testament, F's and S's are interchangeable, evidently, uh, and the New. Newly translated, we know that's translated, out of their original, see how they spell these things, tongues. Uh, and with former translations diligently compared um, and revised, see that F, by His Majesty's special commandment appointed to be read in the churches. Hearing comes, uh, I mean, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So... Uh, the King James Bible was appointed to be read in the churches. Imprinted at London by Robert Barker, printer to the King, uh, to the King's uh, most, that's excellent majesty. Nowhere in here will you see King James Bible. He authorized it. But it was just known as the Holy Bible back then. Now, in this edition, you have some. Uh, you have a publisher's preface, uh, bibliography, graphical <laughs> uh, introduction, the early English translations, uh, the Bible of 1611, the later history of the Bible of 1611. Uh, this is supposed to be a facsimile, simile, but it's in the Roman text and not the Gothic text. Uh, it does have the epistle, uh, dedicatory, and the translator to the reader. You got a can uh, calendar, an almanac uh, for 39 years, uh, so it's way past <laughs> uh, modern because... That would have been 1611, so 39 years from that, 16. 48, 49, something like that. Uh, the order of psalms and lessons to be said in the morning and the evening, that's in the uh, original 1611. Uh, the names and order of the books of the Old Testament and the original for the first 200 years, uh, the 1611 or the King James Bible as we know it, was... Uh, included the Apocrypha, but they put it in between the Testaments, and they did not believe it was canonical. And I think it was King James himself that made them do that, or the bishops. You have the Puritans and the bishops, and they always were arguing. So King James uh, authorized them to uh, make a copy of the Bible, the King James Bible. That's why they call it that. But in the day, they wouldn't have called it that. I've read. I've actually read a lot of this, and uh, just a lot of good information about how where you got your Bible. And uh, 
Then you have the King James Dedicatory. Let's see. Yeah, to the Most High. King James. Translated to the reader, and boy, that small print. But you see, even in the original, it had this Roman type. So they did have this type, which is much easier to read uh, for modern readers than the Gothic type. And uh, this is hard enough. But with the Gothic type, you can't even tell sometimes what kind of, uh, what the letter is. Uh, when I get those, I'll do a review on them. I got a couple of the Gothic. I got an actual 1611 coming, uh, the, the super deluxe, uh, very expensive Bible. But this is not one. This is, uh, like I said, about 60 bucks. You can get the exact same thing, uh, exact same information in a hardback for uh, about 30 I think, once you pay your uh, postage and everything. So anyway, then we get into the Bible. I want to show you. I'm going to go to, uh, if I can find it. It's, it's actually hard to find stuff in here but I'll show you that's in the Apocrypha I guess Judith yeah Barak Maccabees I actually uh, enjoyed reading Maccabees uh, it's a lot of a lot of real history it's not a canonical um, Bible book but there's a lot of history in there uh, that's pretty good let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 2 and let me see if I can find it All right. and Jesus now Jesus is spelt with an I-E-S-U-S -S, and uh, you see this little symbol here the original King James actually came with references and that's what that is right there showing you the reference he was born in Judea, see the I, uh, in the days, see how they spelt that, of Herod the king. Now that's how we would spell Herod. Now let me look over here. Okay, in verse 12, and being warned of God in a dream, see how they spelt dream, that they should not return, look at how they spelt that, to Herod Um, with an E on the end. So even in the same chapter, uh, there was a difference in spelling of the words. The A lot of the um, punctuations in the King James 1611 will be different than the ones of your uh, 1769. And <clears throat> from what I can find out uh, through my research is that was done uh, it was up to the printer uh, he added the punctuations and capitalizations that's why the Oxford and the uh, Cambridge are slightly different uh, the Cambridge will um, will capitalize a lot of the words that the uh, Oxford did not. And we always go to the uh, chapter 1. Of Genesis. I have got to get used to these royal uh, Roman numerals. Oh and this is a. I'm going to get a, go into a detail on these when I get my big Bible, but there's your almanac, and you got the morning and evening prayers. But see, that's that Gothic uh, text right there. And it's, uh, see how much, I mean, it's real beautiful, but, and there it is over here, too. Acts 7 and... We're expired. I don't know what that is. I mean, I'm going to have to... 
I have dyslexia, so it's hard enough for me to read much. <laughs> but I, I'm going to do it. I'll force myself. Okay, let's see. Yeah, and the Gothic text, see that void? Of course, that's not spo spelt the, we would spell it with an I. But in the Gothic text, that looks like a B. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Again, you have your uh, references over here. And look at this, it says, uh, and the earth was without form, see how they spelled that, and void and darkness was upon, that's a V-P-O-N, the face of the deep, D-E-E-P-E, -E -E, and the spirit, see the capital uh, spirit, this must be a Cambridge text, because a lot of the Oxford texts do not capitalize. That's why I've always preferred um, a Cambridge to an Oxford. And as far as I, and I may be wrong about this, but uh, I w uh, my research it says that in um, 1762, uh, Cambridge uh, revised it with the um, standardized spelling. The C, that's uh, when in 1611 there was no English dictionary like they just. I uh, spelt it phonetically, I guess you would say. And uh, see here, they even had uh, notes, Hebrew, between the light and between the darkness. And that would be the uh, cross. So your reference would be here. So the 1611 King James Bible was your first reference Bible, <laughs> literally. But it says it moved across, the, and the Spirit of God moved, and that's a U there. It almost sounds like a cow, moved upon, with the B, the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided, see, with a, a U instead of a B, the light from the darkness, and there would be your uh, reference over here. And so, yeah, pretty cool. This print is very small. Uh, if you want to know, this is a paste down. I think it'll last as long as I want. I did find something I didn't like. This is, goes right to the back, and then that back page, you know how they always have that back page that's kind of off? I wish they would have added a page. You got a couple pages of cardstock at the back, but I wish they would have added a couple pages where it wasn't Revelation at the back that had that in there. Uh, it does have the big uh, block letters to start each chapter. But uh, yeah, Roman uh, printing was definitely available in 1611 and I will show you that I'm getting an original 1611 the big one but I got one of these because I am going to read I have been told by a lot of apostate Christians that uh, the 1611 you don't even know how to read it you couldn't read it if you had to and yes I can it just takes me a little while so, anyway, I gotta get used to these Roman numerals. X, L, I. I think L is 50, so that would be 61, maybe? No. That's, I reckon I can't say that draw Leviathan uh, with a hook. Oh, yeah, okay. 41 because yeah wow i'm gonna have to get get used to this yeah because the x is before i know the l is 50 and then the x is 10 and then the one of course is the one but if the x is before the l <laughs> oh this is a dexlexic nightmare uh psalms will really be fun 
But anyway, that's a quick look at it. This is uh, early in the morning, and I'm starting to babble. So, God bless you. We'll do a review on the other ones uh, as I get them. I'm going to wait and let the girls open them up. You guys have a wonderful day. If you want one of these, you know, if you just want the information, I'm actually going to read it and carry it on the truck. So I wanted the flexibility. Uh, but you can get one exactly the same for like 30 bucks with everything. Uh, I think it's like $25 and then you're shipping and handling. But there you go. Uh, a Hendrickson leather bound 1611 edition King James Bible. You guys have a wonderful day.